From gaming to computing, the timeline continues. Hi and welcome. If you're new here, welcome. I hope we can earn your subscription. This is the second of the technical timeline that I have taken to get here. I recognize that not a lot of people will find this interesting, but some of you might uh, find some triggers to uh, things that brings back memories or uh, you want to discuss. So let me know if that's the case. This time around, I'm going to talk a little bit about my step from the gaming system, ColecoVision, to my first computer. So give it a look. So last time we talked about this and it being my first purchase of major electronic. So now let's take a look at where that led to as this is part of a uh, timeline and what that led to turn this guy off. I apologize. This is one of the best box pictures I could find, but this led to another product that Coleco developed, which was called the Atom computer. And this came in two flavors. There was the the computer set, and then there was an extension to the game console. And the problem with Atom was that just from the onset or the release of the product, they had problems. Lots of problems early on. Part of it had to do with the digital uh, tapes that they were using. That was kind of a new technology. Some of the competitors were using audio tape, so this was better than that. But the coming thing was floppy disks. So floppy disks were really accelerating in use there in the middle 80s. But the devices that they came in were right expensive. This was kind of a, uh, I guess, a cost uh, advantage, maybe, to try to be able to release a computer and I wanted a computer. So with all of its shortcomings, this was the computer that I got, but only after it dropped in price. And it dropped in price because Coleco said, we're out of this. So that was around 1985. So I'm just going to tell you a few things about this computer system that really struck me. And I guess if... People ask me, what's the most memorable thing? It would be two things. And one would be that I wrote or typed my first resignation letter on this system. So that was pretty, well, uh, pretty cool. It had a daisy wheel uh, printer. Really good quality compared to dot matrix uh, uh, printers, which were more prevalent at the time. So you had a real crisp uh, impression onto the paper. Some of the downfalls were that the ribbons that uh, you use were just like for typewriters, they were single use. So that meant when you reached the end of it, you had to put a new ribbon in. But very, very, very good quality. So you had typewriter quality. It had a work processor called Smart Type, I think it was. Uh, there were things were smart. And I do have some notes here to uh, maybe look at to remind me of some things um, from the wiki page. So I used the word processor to type quotes and thank you letters and things like that to customers. The most memorable was the resignation letter. I know who that was to, et cetera. The other stuff that I typed on it, I couldn't I couldn't tell you specifics of who, what, and where uh, concerning those. Now, it also, the kit that I bought came with Smart Basic, which was their basic programming. And Early on when Adam released, there were lots of legal issues of developers or people, you know, developing for Adam that they rules that they had to follow and they could have licenses revoked and all this other stuff. And 
I thought, was that going to impact me with the basic stuff? But the reality was everything that I wrote stayed within my own realm. And that this being my first computer, it was really my first go at real programming of any sort. To be quite honest with you, I'd seen punch cards and key machines, you know, to to create the punch cards, but didn't really understand the whole process of writing a program that way. I also later, I did learn to do a little bit of uh, Intel uh, programming, but uh, microcode programming. But here it was basic. And so I wrote uh, the most memorable thing that I wrote was a translator. It was an English to French or French to English. And it was really an input output kind of deal and a lookup table. So you could type in, say, blue, B L U E, and then get back the French version, blue, for that. Uh, you just look it up and this equals this, then display it. So it would display it on the command line, basically. That program, I, I did several versions of it. It was so that my first child, who was born in uh, 1984, would maybe have something to play with. So I can't remember too much you know, other things that I wrote, I, I did a, a lot of little input output things, but the most significant thing was that translation program and uh, basically working off of lookup tables. And uh, I'm trying to think here in my mind, I remember also having it uh, not just that you type the name, but you could select the name by, by coming up in a list, A, B, C, D, E, F, and then it would look up the equivalent for it. Uh, I did take that to a French version. So the words written in French, I didn't, couldn't put the characters and accent and characters and all in, but so that maybe she might be able to read it, select it, and then see that she got the right answer. Very basic, very simple, not much to it. That was my foray into computing in the middle eighties. So an actual dive in some other things occurred during this time frame that gave me access to Apple, a deck CPM machine, and then things rolled into me getting my first device, which I'll talk about next time in the next video. I kept this device until I think it was 92 when I made a move from our first house to the current home that we live in. And I had stopped using, I mean, there was this device really had no use at all as a computer. Played with it a little bit as a game, but my kids were starting to play with it by that time. And I, uh, just as a computer, I had better computing devices and a friend who was very interested in Coleco. He had, uh, some, uh, Coleco vision stuff and, and Adam, and he was wanting some more hardware to do some more things. He was one of those enthusiasts that just stuck on the Coleco world did keep and I think it still operates that there's a, like a user group. I don't know why. I don't know what one would do with one of those uh, computers today. It was a Z80A processor, somewhere in the three um, megahertz range. That was at the low end of uh, processors at that time. So the device was kind of slow in anything that you did on it. I don't know why anybody would want to fool with it today other than through nostalgia. And you can do some of that through 
emulators on a PC, so I'm not really sure why. It's big, bulky hardware, as you can see. Uh, printer was gi gigantic. The CPU, base unit, and just everything. Um, it was a decent keyboard, I guess, for the time until I touched my first IBM keyboard, and it was like, wow, it was a really nice experience. IBM had great keyboards, I thought. Anyway, that's it. Adam, so I went ColecoVision Gaming to Coleco. So Coleco's ColecoVision, their game system, to the Atom computer. So that's kind of like my next step in the progression of technology. But now by this point, I do understand programming a little bit. I, in my work life, I'm doing a different type of programming, but now I'm starting to learn that and really able to apply logic flows, et cetera, better. So, you know, things are kind of lining up now uh, with what I'm doing professionally and what I'm doing as a hobby. So we're going to maybe see how these more align here in the future. I hope you found that interesting. Uh, it brings back some memories. If you did, give it a thumbs up. Hey, subscribe. I'm going to do some more of these, and I promise to do some more duo videos and maybe some other videos as well. Give me some comments. Tell me what you think. What were you using? And finally, but the most important, thanks for watching.